everyone and welcome back to another video with Amy Makes That. As always, I am so excited you're here for today's tutorial and it is going to be on how I made this photo turn into this photo on how to create a digital illustration with the app Procreate. The app Procreate is something that you can purchase with your iPad. I have the iPad Air and the links for that exact model that I have will be in the video description as well as the Apple Pencil that I use as well. I have a few other iPad related videos such as downloading fonts to that and to Procreate as well as just Procreate for beginners. So if you haven't watched those videos yet, I highly recommend you do because this is a little more advanced for those who are just starting out with the iPad. But let's stop talking as always and get into the video. If you did like this video, please give this video a thumbs up and also click my subscribe button to see more videos like this. Let's get into the video. Welcome to VoiceOver Amy. So here I'm opening Procreate and as you can see these are all of my previous projects but since we are doing a digital illustration we're going to click on photo at the top right hand corner select the photo that we want and here you can see it is already uploaded into procreate now i like to create a lot of different layers even though this isn't going to be the amount i will hide the background color and start to add a bunch of different layers what i like to do is for each section i like to make a different layer and you'll see why in a bit so the first one that i'm going to start are the hands in order to get the color of the photo you can just hold down either with your apple pencil or your finger and the color will automatically come up i also use the studio pen and we do not want to draw on top of the photo layer because if you do that and you make a mistake when you try and erase the brush that you just did um, it will also erase the picture as well so we don't want to erase the picture so here i selected the color already and i am just lightly drawing over the hand And to fill in, you could either manually fill in, but with bigger areas, I will show you with the second hand what you can do to make it much faster. So here I just filled everything in. I'm going to zoom out and zoom back into the second hand, which is my peace sign. And the color is a little bit different up here. Um, that also is a personal preference if you wanna make it different. I just wanted to make it the same so the skin tone is the same. So here, all you have to do is just take the color from the top right hand circle and then drag it into the area that you want to. So this will only work if the area is completely closed off. It has to be a complete outline in order for it to be filled in. Here, I also like to remove the photo as well to make sure I didn't miss any areas. Now I'm going to select a new layer and then pick up the color. I double checked to make sure that it was definitely black and it is. So here we have the layer selected. And since this is a dark color, what I like to do is reduce the opacity on the picture because then you can see the color more easily. Again, I do go over a lot of the basic tools that I'm explaining right now, how to reduce the opacity and how to undo and redo certain things in the Procreate for Beginners video that I have. So I will link that card again here, but I will also be explaining a few other tips throughout this video. So I'm just being this part up. Again, I'm, I'm manually coloring it because I think it's a little fun to color it manually. But if you do want to save time, of course, you can do the second method that I did. So I'm filling in the rest of the areas. And then I use the second method for that one just to make it a little bit faster. And then we can go back into our layers, make sure everything looks good. And with darker layers, what I like to do is put the white background color on because then I can see if I miss something, which I did. You'll see a little white dot right here. So I'm just going to reselect the color and fill that in. And then we can go back into our layers, hide the background color again, and put the opacity back to 
the regular mount. And to move layers, again, I do go over this in my video, but you can easily move layers. So the layers that are on the top will be on the top, obviously, and then on the bottom are gonna be underneath that. So you can see here, I moved the jeans to underneath because my arm is technically over the jeans. So I selected the color again, and it's basically, it's the same exact process. You're selecting the color, you're making sure you're in a new layer, outlining the entire area that you want to select, and then you fill it in. It helps a lot to also zoom in as well because sometimes it's very difficult to see where you're actually drawing. And I didn't do the full jean because I wanna make the cuffs a little bit darker. Also, sometimes when I do the second method of dragging the color into the full outlined area, um, it can get a little faulty, so I just go over it again really quickly. Here I'm doing the scrunchie really quick in a lighter. Even though it was a black, I did do a lighter color just so it looks like it is scrunchie. And here I selected the darker color for the cuffs. The smaller areas, I do just manually fill in. And here you can see I moved it underneath those layers. So now the hat was probably my favorite part because I loved outlining the text that I did. And fun fact, this actually is another tutorial. So I did do a tutorial on how to heat press floppy hats and I will link that as well. So I thought it was really cool to actually do this one because I made that hat. And for the shadow, what I did was, I originally was going to do the right hand side, but I just selected a darker color and I created a circle and then made it look like the top hat was a shadow. So it looks weird up close, but it actually looks much better further away. Here I selected the color black and then I'm just outlining the text for the rosé all day text. So now moving on to the jeans, again, I am speeding this part up because this was probably over an hour long of footage and it's me just simply repeating the same steps. So I took the darker color of the cuffs and then I outlined it and drew some lines here. Again, I am also very beginner at this, so if you want to do it a different way or if you want to have more details, that is totally up to you. I didn't add the rips or anything because I didn't feel like it made a difference, but of course, if this is for a client and you want to use this in your shop or anything, um, make sure that the customer is aware that you're not doing certain things or if you want to add the rips and etc. I probably would have added the rips in, but just for the purpose of this video, I didn't want it to be too long. Now I'm outlining the shoes in black. Now for hair. So hair is very tricky. Um, I've come a long way with this and it still isn't perfect, but I do have a video that I did watch religiously and I will link that in the video description below and it helped so, so much with making the hair look like it's actually real. So what I like to do first is I like to select the main color of the hair. Now I have quite a few colors in my hair as you can see so i like to do the kind of darkest color first and i don't use the studio pen i use the medium brush and airbrushing the airbrushing gives it a much lighter effect for hair which i like a lot 
Um, and again, the woman does explain this in that video, which I will link. But here I'm just outlining basically and I'm filling in the hair. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be manually drawing those strands in. So kind of just do the outline right here. And then I like to create a bunch of new layers. The second layer, I'm going to choose a little bit lighter color than the one that I just did. And I'm gonna do the same method, except I'm kind of just gonna make it more of like a highlight. So it doesn't have to be completely filled in. As you can see here, like you still see the, the dark area peeking out. And then for the third layer, I like to do a lighter color and I make the brush a little bit smaller. And here I will be drawing these strands individually. So you'll see these light blonde highlights that I have. I'm just drawing those lines. And then I like to select these layers and see what I'm working with. And you can kind of see these strands, but you kind of can't. This is a trust the process kind of thing, so bear with me. And especially you want to make sure you see on the, the ends here, so you don't see those like thick globs of like the airbrush. You want to make sure you emphasize on the outline of like the outside, as well as the ends of the strands as well, so it looks more real. So you can see these little strands here. And I also select the main color that I use. So that first color, that darkest one that I have, I select that color and I have the brush in that very thin brush. So you can see I minimize it a little bit more and I emphasize on the ends of the strands. And then I like to add a lot of strands towards the outside as well. So it kind of looks like it's just flowing. And I add some random ones too as I go, you can see. But again, like I'm doing this very fast and I'm also doing this very rough. So if I did take more time with this, it would have probably looked a little bit better. So then I take the lightest color that I have, I will select a new layer, which is gonna be on the top, and I'm gonna make sure I can see all the layers so they're not hidden. And I did get cut off on this part at one point, but here I'm just adding those strands in to make sure those highlights are seen. And I'm doing this in real time so you can see how long it kind of takes. <laughs> I'm just unhiding everything to see where the actual highlights are to make it a little bit more realistic to the photo. But here you can see I added all of the highlights and again, I'm just adding those little strands to the sides as well. I forgot to add in a little bit of the shirt on the background. So I'm doing that and then I'm adding a little bit more strands. that is how I do my hair. So now we can merge the layers together. So once you're completely done, make sure you are absolutely done because you cannot undo this. Um, you want to merge the layers. So I merged the hair, I merged the shirt, I merged the hat layers. For the background color, you can either change it manually like with the background color or you can add a layer like I do. And then I select a color and then I drag it and drop it down. So you, you can add any other color you want. Or what I like to do is I like to take colors from the actual photo. So again, you'll do the same process as you did before. You'll just hold down your finger or Apple Pencil, select the color and then drag it down. And 
then this is the final look. I'm so happy with it. And again, you can save it as a PNG, JPEG, whatever you like. And I'll show you the before and after. So I'll remove the background color, remove that. And also if you wanted to create this as a PNG, this is how you would save it. Again, all my beginner tips are in this Procreate for Beginners video. And then I merged all the layers so you can see the before and after. So that was before and that is after. Thank you again for watching. Thank you very much everyone for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please again, don't forget to click that subscribe button and also give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below again, what was your favorite trick or something that you learned that you might not have known. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial and I will see everyone in the next video. Bye.